Hello, my name is Annemiel Harsing and I'm a professor, research mentor and staff development lead at Middlesex University London. Welcome to this presentation on improving your research profile, reputation and impact. This presentation consists of eight sections that can be watched as freestanding videos or as part of a long playlist. This is the first part of the presentation in which I discuss the rationale behind it. I will explain why it is so important to have a strong research profile in academia these days and how this impacts on both your own reputation and impact and that of the university you work for. As I said, this is part of an eight part presentation. After this first introductory session, we'll look in more detail at what impact is. After these two scene setting sessions, we'll focus on metrics and citation impact in the next three sections. I'll give you a crash course on data sources and metrics, and I'll explain how you can find your own citation record in the Publish or Perish software. I'll then explain how engaging in academic behavior that is both ethical and professional can improve both your citations and external impact. The next three sessions will be all about research profiles and social media. I'll talk about the importance of creating research profiles and why you would want to use or not use social media in academia. As this might all be a bit overwhelming, I will then provide you with a clear seven step process that you can use to improve your reputation and impact. I will finish off with some evidence showing that sharing your research on social media is effective and some tips on what to do if you still don't know where to start. Now, improving your research profile is important for any academic at any university. However, it's even more important for academics at universities that are not part of the country's elite research intensive universities. In the UK, there is a large group of universities that are former polytechnical institutions. This means that traditionally they focused on teaching more practical skills. Lecturers in these universities did not generally engage much in research. However, 30 years ago, they all became universities. That's why as a group, they're called post-92s. I don't really like this label much, but you will see it used a lot. Since then, however, many of these universities, including Middlesex University, have dramatically improved their research performance. This is the case even though this research performance is not always as widely spread across Strav as it is in traditional research intensive universities and research cultures can be characterized as emerging rather than well established. At the same time, they maintain their emphasis on caring for students and external engagement. So we could in fact call them triple intensives, focusing on research, teaching and external engagement equally. But part of the problem in triple intensive universities is that investment in research is not always part of the university's tradition and thus staff have access to fewer resources. Even that is changing in, the post, in some of the post-92s though. However, the biggest problem for triple intensives is the lack of a strong research reputation. And even if they're performing very well on objective metrics, such as publications, citations and research funding, their external reputation often lags behind this objective performance. This can easily create a vicious circle, as their lack of, their lack of reputation may make it harder to compete with elite institutions for scarce resources, such as, for instance, research funding, positions on research councils or other prestigious positions in the higher education sector. And you can nurture and develop emerging research cultures into strong, supportive and inclusive research cultures as we have done at Middlesex University. You can even throw money at initiatives. However, changing an institution's reputation is a long and very difficult process especially in a higher education system that is as stratified as the UK. Now, because reputation lags behind objective performance, 
most non-elite institutions experience a large gap between their objective research performance and their subjective reputations. This is true for universities as well as for individual academics, and obviously their reputation is intertwined. The reputation of academics is influenced by the reputation of the university they work for, but at the same time they are influencing their university's reputation. This is especially true if the university is not well known. If the university is well known, academics in that university kind of carry the aura of that university's reputation, regardless of their actual individual performance. If a university is not well known, most academics will use the reputation of academics working in their own field of research as a yardstick for the reputation of that university. So, if in a particular research field a lesser known university employs a few really well known academics, that might translate to a better reputation for the university. That means that in those universities the actions of individuals can have a lot of impact possibly more so than in well-known universities. I believe that is true for Middlesex University as well. So to give you an example for this discrepancy between objective and subjective reputation, let's look at the Middlesex University ranking in the field of business and economics on two of the important international research rankings that include both metrics and reputation components. These reputation components, incidentally, are based on surveys of academics. So in the 2022 US News Ranking, uh, there are 39 universities in the UK that are ranked in business and economics. Middlesex ranks 9th in terms of citation metrics, but only 33 in terms of reputation. This is the second biggest gap in the UK. In the QS ranking, Middlesex ranks identically to the University of Melbourne, my former employer by the way, on citation metrics, but there is a vast difference in their reputation scores. And as these reputation scores count for 80% and the metrics for only 20%, Melbourne ranks no less than 26 overall, whereas Middlesex ranks between 351 and 400. So in removing our reputation is crucial, as reputation has a big impact, not just in the international research rankings, but also in attracting staff and students, and research funding, and maintaining influential positions in the higher education sector. So as the reputation of a university and its academics are so intertwined, improving your own reputation can also benefit Middlesex and vice versa. And whilst the university will be working on institutional initiatives to improve reputation and will support you to do so, individual members of staff can do a lot too. But we do need consistent and repeated messaging. So we really need to do this together and, and that's what this presentation really is about. We can all do our bit to help promote not just our own work, but that is out of, of others too. I've recently, for instance, started sharing LinkedIn recommendations that I wrote for colleagues as posts on LinkedIn under the hashtag Positive Academia. So please consider joining us there. So very quickly for those of you who don't know me, why am I giving this presentation rather than someone else? Well, first of all, because in addition to my identity as an international business researcher, I've been doing research in the area of research evaluation for more than 15 years now and have published in the field's key journals, such as Scientrometrics and Journal of Infometrics. Second, I have been supporting academics in this field since the last century, with my website, which includes the journal Quality List, uh, the publisher of Paris software that you'll hear much more about later, as well as a blog on all things academia. I started this blog in 2016 and it has well over 300 postings now. Finally, I'm a very highly cited researcher myself. Uh, in a recently published ranking based on Scopus data, uh, I am number 44 in the world in my field, business and management, number 14 outside the US and number 7 in the UK. So now that's the why of this presentation and the presenter done. 
But before we start with the next section though, I would like to really call, uh, clarify a few things to ensure we, we start out on the right footing. First of all, this presentation is a simple menu of tools. Use it a la carte, not as a fixed or set menu. Different academics have different appetites for different dishes. Use this presentation as an opportunity to share experience in your research group, your department, your school, your faculty, not as a straitjacket. And second, please don't see this uh, cynically as an instrumental exercise. It is something that most academics are intrinsically motivated to engage with as it improved the improves the diffusion of your research and your ability to make a real difference in the world. So please don't see this as something you have to do for the university. It's not yet another chore on a long to-do list. Yes, it will help Middlesex too, but ultimately this is something you do for your own intrinsic satisfaction and your own career. Finally, we've talked quite a bit about citations already and we'll talk more about this in two or three sessions of uh, this presentation. This is because citations are crucial to maintaining our position in the research rankings. Much of our increase in these rankings in the last five years was driven by citations. Now, I don't like these rankings any more than you do, but students and academics do pay attention to them, so they are important to our livelihood. Ultimately, we want to improve our reputation and create a virtual cycle, possibly even using our improved reputation to work toward changing or abolishing these rankings. However, in the short to medium term, we simply need to maintain our current position in the rankings to, present, to prevent a vicious cycle. So we, do need to be, so we do need to pay attention to citations. More importantly though, please realize that the exact same tools that I'm discussing in this presentation to improve your citations can also help you improve your external and societal impact. Also rest assured that I'm very much aware of the differences in citation norms and practices across disciplines. In fact, in the third part of this presentation, I will explain to you why comparing citations across fields generally is a very bad idea. But I have designed and published about a metric which creates a much more level playing field in this respect. But much more about that later. Then finally, you might think that the emphasis on tools still sounds a bit instrumental. So what about all these great stories and narratives we can tell? And that you might want to communicate to the outside world when building your research profile. Absolutely, these are important too, but these narratives can only be created by you, by your research group, by your department, by your faculty, by your school or by you as an individual. I'm really, really hoping that this presentation and the flipped classroom sessions that I will be running will encourage research groups to co-create a coherent narrative if they haven't already done so. And remember that the tools that I will describe in this presentation are only effective if you've reflected about the content and the narrative that you want to communicate. Narratives, tools and metrics are all important in academic settings, including performance evaluation and promotion. You might like to have a look at the six-part blog post series I've written about academic promotion and the need to combine concrete evidence of impact, teaching and research and service with strong career narratives. So narratives and metrics. For all of these links, if you have access to slides, you can simply click on them to go to the relevant web page. If you don't, just Google them and then add the name of my website, www.housing.com if needed, and it will be one of the few first results. I really hope you enjoyed this part of the presentation and now understand a bit better why building your research profile is so important. In the next section, we'll look in a bit more detail at what impact is. If you're watching this presentation from outside Middlesex University, I wish you all the best in building your research profile, reputation and impact. If you're watching this presentation in preparation for a flipped classroom session at Middlesex University, I really look forward to seeing you in one of the sessions. Make sure you come prepared with your questions.